right? Twisting the bottle. Nice. So today we're going to test a little bit of champagne for you. And champagne is one of Lil's favorite drinks, so I'm not yes. mistaken. So here's a question for you. You have to think real hard about this. Mm -hmm. How old were you, be honest, when you first tasted champagne? I was in the university. And how old is that? 16 and a half. Well, there you go. Are you sure you didn't try it before with your friends? No. no. So today we're drinking Henkel, as I said. This is Lil's favorite sparkling wine. Now we might mistakenly call it champagne. Champanske. Or champanske, depending on where you're from. But as you know, champagne comes from the Champagne region in France. We're not going to talk about that today. But we are going to have a little sampling of this nice Henkel Trocken. Um, a guy developed by a guy named uh, Otto Henkel. And actually, he started this stuff back in 1909 in Slovakia. Wow. And it's processed over the years mm -hmm. now in Wiesbaden, Germany. And it says it's launched in, uh, it says here 1856, but it actually launched date was 1854. Always be careful when opening a champagne. I think you all know why. Oh. Mm -hmm. Everything's safe until you take what's called the cage off. All right. So you need to hold that because this could pop as soon as the cage comes off. It's unlikely. Right. And the trick here is to twist the bottle, not the cork. All right. Twisting the bottle. <laughs> nice. This is considered a dry champagne, Henkel Trocken. Mm -hmm. Named after, of course, Otto Henkel. But Trocken means dry in German, apparently. But this champagne, one of the reasons Lil likes it, being a nutritionist, it has 20 grams of sugar per one liter. Mm -hmm. Is that good, bad, or otherwise? <laughs> it's not the best, but when you consider one liter, so 20 grams, that means half liter is 10 grams. And 250 milliliters would be what? Five grams. There you go. Yeah, now, can. in contrast, to give you an idea, this is not my favorite. I like the Italians and Martini Rossi, but it has 90 grams of sugar yeah. per liter. And I got to tell you, Coca-Cola, and this is shocking, has 108 grams of sugar per liter. So my champagne is like drinking Coca-Cola, which is probably not good. And I'm probably going to switch to the low round. Your alcohol. champagne, but not this one. Yes. Okay. okay. So the question that comes up about glasses. You've seen three different glasses over the years. Your typical flute from the Roaring Twenties. This one not so popular because it was a bit later. Okay, it's called a coupe. Then of course the stemless. And we'll explain that in a second. So the flutes, let's take them out of the Roaring Twenties. The coupes, people mistake this. There's a rumor about it going around that Marie Antoinette created these and she created them the size of her left breast. No. No, it's not true. Because champagne was invented long before Marie Antoinette. Okay. Right? So it did come out later. We'll start with the flute. And one of the reasons for the flute is it's just so classy looking, isn't it? And you see the Roaring Twenty girls kicking up their heels and dancing to it. Right? It's like that. I think this is Lil's preference, this one here. Okay, I'm going to go to my dear. Mm -hmm. I like the coupe myself. Mm. Smells divine. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? It's funny you say that because mine will smell better. The only reason for the difference in these is... What do you mean your, your smell better? Because of the wider glass. Oh, the air gets okay. in mm -hmm. and you can smell the mm -hmm. bubbles. The air activates mm -hmm. the bubbles and the bubbles give you the smell and the taste. Oh, so I that's smell why, actually more champagne yes, than here. Because it's a smaller mm -hmm. opening. Okay. It doesn't smell so I'm going to okay, say. Okay, can we start just here. drinking for God's okay, sake? I must admit, I do like that, especially okay. on a hot day. I prefer this glass. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I can, I can see the aroma different. Okay. But okay, give me this. The only thing about that is people say with the open air, champagne should be chilled about 46 degrees Fahrenheit, 8 degrees Celsius is the average. But this gets warmer quicker and the warmth can affect the taste. 
So can I interrupt? Yes. So if it gets warmer quicker, then you have to replenish. So you drink more. You drink faster. Ah. That's the key. So you have to drink faster. <laughs> Shocking, right? Okay. And very often you're seeing these little glasses, the stomach glasses. They're, they're adorable too. I love them. They're cute. I think they're cute. And of course, if you hold them, what's going to happen to the champagne? Warm. All right. So actually the proper way to drink from one of these Just hold it from the bottom, which some people look silly, but you got a classy, elegant lady, and it looks yeah. pretty sexy. It's supposed to hold. Oh, the fresh glass on like that. Fresh glass. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, you should hold by steam. steam. Always. Steam. When you warm up the champagne. Where these glasses started to come about was when uh, rail travel got big, and it was easier to store these glasses and keep me with these glasses rather than having to store a stem. Mm -hmm. So it's funny investigating the champagnes like we were. Mm -hmm. the, ch the more expensive the champagne, the less the sugar. Did you find that when you were reading? Yes. But that's okay. So maybe we'll pop into a, a better champagne with less sugar next time, like a, a Bollinger, a Tattinger. But other Dom Perignon. Dom Perignon is almost four hundred dollars a bottle. Oh, you think I don't uh, worth four hundred dollars? Okay, folks, you heard that here. When I get the Dom Perignon and she's mad at me, you'll understand why. Anyway, let's do a cheers. Cheers. Thank you for following us. For you guys.